All right, so uh, I'm going to get started pretty quickly because uh, I know we're running late, a little bit late this morning. Um, <clears throat> so today I'm going to talk about how Superset and Druid power real-time analytics at Airbnb. Um, but before I get started on that, uh, I'm just going to introduce myself briefly. So um, my name is Boschmein. I noticed that sometimes the microphone goes goes out when when Sid was speaking too, when he would like turn his le his head to the left. So I'll try to be a little bit more robotic and turn this way. All right, so, uh, so yeah, my name is Maxim Bushmai. I go by Max to make it easy on, on everyone. Um, I work at an Airbnb. Um, I started this other project, with, which you might be uh, familiar with, um, which is called Apache Airflow. Fun fact about it, uh, Sid, um, now, uh, like, reach out to the project, and, um, and then we spoke together, and he kind of pushed me to, uh, uh, to, to go and uh, join the Apache Software Foundation to, the, to, to have Airflow join the ASF. Um, and then um, Sid has been super, uh, like a driving force. Great. Um, you guys let me know if I need to use a, a proper microphone. Let's see. All right, There's, there has to be at least uh, one technical dif difficulty or you know, just the, the rule of text. So hopefully, if this was the, the technical difficulty, my demo is going to go well. Um, so yeah, back to, uh, to Airflow. So more recently, I started another uh, project that's called Superset, in which I'm going to be talking about today. Um, and I'm going to try to set you know, Superset in context of like, how we use it at Airbnb and how we use it in a specific case of uh, real-time data uh, with Druid. Um, an interesting fact is that Superset is also joining the Apache Software Foundation, so soon it's going to be called Apache Superset. Uh, I used to work at Facebook, we used to work at Yahoo, and at Ubisoft. Um, I'm at a point where I don't really say how long I've been working with data, because it's kind of, you know, it's just like been too long now. Um, and Definitely been working with data since uh, before it was, it was cool. Um, I just squeezed in this new slide this morning because people were talking about data engineering and I realized that it was data eng conf today. Um, and uh, recently I wrote, this, um, I wrote this blog post called The Rise of the Data Engineer that's on Medium and it got, um, it got super popular. So who in the room has uh, read that post? Okay, that's not bad, and it leaves uh, room for, for more people to go and check it out. But I was trying to, uh, to really define um, in this blog post, like, what is data engineering all about, and how does it relate to, um, to say, previous um, related jobs like, um, like business intelligence engineer or data warehouse architect, and where it fits in, you know, with data analyst, data scientist um, in the modern world. So... If you're interested, you can check that out. And I put some analytics, not to brag about the readings, but it's kind of cool that Medium has uh, this data pipeline and this data product where, um, as an author of a post, you can see um, you know, how, many, how many reads you got. Um, and I think it's, it's relevant in this context, because you can kind of imagine all of the, um, the pipeline and all, everything that takes place behind the scene for this to happen. All right, so this is the quick agenda for this talk. Um, so first, I'm going to talk briefly about Druid and, and say you know, a few words about what it's about and what kind of database it is, uh, what are the guarantees and properties that it, that it has. Uh, then I'm going to quickly introduce you know, Superset uh, from a high-level perspective. Then we're going to do a somewhat deep dive into the, the Air, Airbnb's data infrastructure uh, with a focus on real time. And then this, this uh, presentation is going to be largely a Superset demo. So I want to really, uh, for everyone in this room, to get a good feel for what Superset does and does not do. Um, and you know, one of the takeaways that I want people to walk away from this talk with is, you know, is, is Superset something I want to use in my, uh, in, in my environment? And, um, and hopefully by you know, listening to this talk, you'll get a sense for that. Um, and then we'll, we're going to take a little bit of a look at, of what's under the hood of Superset and how it works and why we built it and, and how we built it. And hopefully we're going to have time for questions. If not, um, so every, uh, for every speaker today, there is an office hour in a room that just, as you come out on the right at the end of the hallway there, so you can come 
and ask questions, and I'll be, I'll be you know, happy to answer questions about my talk or about um, Airflow if you're interested in that, too. Cool, so I'm going to start with Druid, just to, kind of to set the foundation, because it's a really important part uh, of our um, infrastructure at Airbnb, uh, of our real-time infrastructure at Airbnb. So Druid is a blazing fast, real-time distributed column store. I think it has you know, more buzzwords, but this is as many as I wanted to put in here. Um, but it's, it's, it, it has an open source uh, community that is very thriving. Um, it's been battle tested at larger, large companies. I, I believe some of the people uh, from meta markets are going to be speaking in this conference, and I'm sure they're going to mention Druid. So meta markets was the um, mother company for, um, <clears throat> for Druid. Sorry, I'm a little congested this morning. Um, uh, as well as at Yahoo. So Yahoo has a very large install. They're very bullish on Druid, and they also use Superset um, at, at, uh, at Yahoo. And there's like you know hundreds of companies, uh, presumably that are running Druid. Um, so it is so real. Druid does support um, real time, though you can load data in a batch form too. Um, <clears throat> then we're going to talk a, a little bit about how we use uh, some of these features later. Um, it is a column store. It is, it is heavily indexed. Um, it is horizontally scalable. Um, the, the way a Druid cluster works, there's a lot of specialized nodes uh, that take on different tasks. So that means that um, if you want to really optimize and control that infrastructure and, and ramp up certain uh, classes of nodes on your Druid cluster, you can do so. Um, it assumes an OLAP-type workload. Uh, contrarily to other NoSQL databases, say like HBase or, um, or Cassandra, um, in, in some cases, these databases assume that you know ahead of time um, the kind of queries you're going to run, and it assumes that you're going to leverage that primary index that they have, and you're going to structure your data a certain way. Uh, with Druid, it really supports arbitrary queries, and it will perform well um, whatever you filter on, group by, um, that sort of thing. So, um, so you can really load your data in Druid and then ask all sorts of questions, and uh, Druid will perform well. Um, it has deep support for sketches. So sketches is this thing um, that uh, represents usually a probabilistic count distinct. So at that scale, uh, really often when you do web analytics or different kinds of analytics, you need to do um, count distinct user ID, count distinct you know, <clears throat> um, you know, user pairs. And it's, it's pretty um, useful to do that. And it's usually pretty com uh, compute intensive. And it's a, a problem for, a hard problem for these types of databases. And, Druid has a really good support for sketches, um, which is really good. And it's a feature that we uh, leverage quite a bit. So Superset, so that's just the, the quick intro of like what is Superset uh, before we get into the demo. <clears throat> so Superset is a modern, enterprise-ready business intelligence web application. Um, I hate the term enterprise-ready. I also don't like the term business intelligence. Those are kind of antiquated and very corporate. But it still describes what Superset is pretty well. Um, enterprise ready means you know, it is secure, and you can create roles and give access to different people to different um, databases or schemas or tables. Uh, business intelligence, because it is a, a data consumption uh, application. And really, the idea behind Superset is to explore your data, create interactive dashboards, uh, and share discoveries. So uh, it's really kind of taking on, um, in the open source space, we're taking kind of head on with um, vendors like uh, Mode, Periscope, Looker, uh, and even Tableau. All right, so now I'm going to get into Airbnb's data infrastructure. And that is, this slide is really the high level data infrastructure. Um, and it's not specific for real time. I will have another slide after this where we kind of explode uh, the real time portion of it. And I'm going to talk quite a bit about um, how real time works. Um, so at Airbnb, um, we use Airflow, of course, at the very top. So this is how we schedule pretty much all of our uh, batch jobs. And this is also how we um, spin up, in some cases, some, uh, some real time services as well. So we can abuse Airflow into running a lot long running services because somehow we can and we do. Um, and then the flow, you know, the main data sources that we have at Airbnb are uh, MySQL scrapes that we scoop and, and load into our gold hive cluster, uh, as well as event logs that you know, we stream into Kafka and also somehow land into um, HDFS in our main hive cluster. 
Um, we do have two Hadoop clusters uh, because we, um, uh, for high availability reason, uh, the gold cluster is the one that has all of our raw data and uh, all of our high SLA, super important uh, pipelines, say the pipelines that the data engineering team will create to uh, create the core uh, components or core schemas in the warehouse. And silver is a, is a replication of that that we can use for failover uh, or for disaster recovery. And it's also the sandbox and playground of our data scientists, data analysts, and information workers that want to run queries and derive data and do all that crazy stuff that uh, data scientists do with data. Um, so we do, um, you know, HDFS, we use HDFS. We increasingly use S3 as a, um, as a distributed file system too because it's cheaper and it's low maintenance. Um, and we use Spark quite a bit. So though like a lot of our um, ETL and, and, you know, data processing scheme is done uh, using Hive um, and HQL, uh, we increasingly use uh, quite a bit of Spark uh, um, to do all sorts of batch processing. Um, now the bottom layer is more towards consumption. And then, you know, of course, uh, Superset, I, I kind of made, made it look bigger um, because this is what we're talking about today. But you can see that Superset sources data mostly from uh, Druid. So you see the pipeline here where you have the event logs going into Kafka, somehow make it into Druid. Um, and then from Superset, we can analyze this data in real time. We also take data from Hive or from Hadoop in some contexts. So the, the very hot data um, or the data that is usually our core metrics and core dimensions and large data sets that are too slow to um, consume uh, in Presto because they're big and important, those we uh, load, load into Druid to as batch. And we consume some of that data through Superset. And um, so, of course, we, uh, Superset works well with Presto. Um, and then we have this, these two other um, consumption, data consumption visualization tools. Um, so AirPal, which we're deprecating, it's an open source project that is a SQL IDE on Presto uh, that we're replacing in favor of Superset, because Superset is a superset of, uh, of AirPal. We support all the features that AirPal does, so, it does not, we're, so we're kind of... Uh, going um, end of life uh, with, with AirPal. And Tableau, somehow we use uh, decreasingly, but uh, we still have a lot of good use cases for Tableau internally. Um, and, you know, I could get, if we have time or maybe any questions or in the office hours, I can talk a little bit more as to when we use Superset versus Tableau. Um, a little bit more about the event logs here uh, before I move on to the, the real-time portion, which is kind of circled in here. Um, so for event logging at Airbnb, um, I wish we had used Avro that Sid talked about earlier, but we use Thrift um, to enforce schemas. So uh, for everything that is logged at Airbnb, there is a, a Thrift file which defines the schema of what we, we uh, log, and that allows us to enforce that, um, that the messages we load are, are, uh, that we log are consistent and predictable. Um, and that allows for better integration down the line. Cool. So now this is like looking more into uh, real time uh, or streaming at Airbnb. And um, I'm going to start <clears throat> today. We're mostly uh, interested in um, the flow that goes from event logging to Kafka to Spark streaming to Druid. And I'm going to have another slide on this. And uh, this is what we're focusing on today. But I want to talk about the other use cases or the other ways that we do, um, that, that do real-time at Airbnb. So the first one I want to talk about is how we stream the MySQL bin log. So MySQL bin log is the event log from our production MySQL databases. We push that into Kafka with something called Spinal Tap, and somehow into Spark Streaming, and then into HBase. So we do replay the MySQL bin log into HBase, which sounds kind of crazy. Um, that allows us to have in HBase a, a, a current snapshot of what's going on in production that is very low latency. And um, there's this cool thing with Presto. Presto is a qu distributed query engine that works very well with the Hive Metastore and Hive uh, tables and structures. Uh, but Presto knows how to talk to other databases. Um, so it, there is a Presto connector for HBase. And that means we can write a Presto query that will uh, query essentially the equivalent of our MySQL production, say, user table into HBase. 
And that's useful because we can join that table with a Hive table or with um, other, um, other things that uh, Presto uh, knows how to query. <clears throat> but the main advantage of that, uh, of that streaming the bin, the bin log into HBase is that we can take instant snapshots of our MySQL tables into HDFS. And, and the reason why that matters is that uh, the way you would do that, so if you want to scoop your MySQL database into Hadoop, the way you might naively do that is that you would take a backup of your MySQL database at a point in time, say midnight, take that database, restore it into some temporary MySQL database, and then now you have like a static snapshot um, backup that's been restored, then you would scoop the data out and then load it in. Um, at Airbnb, that we, we, had, we, we had some mileage out of this technique, but at some point in time, our data SLAs was to lo load core data, which is kind of the core portion of our warehouse, by 9 a.m. Uh, in the morning, and, um, and it was just becoming impossible to do that just because the whole uh, snapshot process and restore MySQL was taking so much time, right? Because like, just to take that backup, restore that backup, scoop it out, load it in, that, that became that it took you know, 10 hours or something like that, so we had no more time to do our actual compute and uh, you know, ETL. Um, so now that we have this, we can take, uh, you know, H, it's really easy to take a snapshot from HBase into um, HDFS, and we can do that instantly. So at midnight 01, we've got, um, we got our snapshot and we're ready to run our ETL. So that was quite a, a section here on, on um, some of the streams, some, some of the real-time stuff that we do. Um, you can see that we also use this thing called Datadog, who here is familiar with Datadog. So Datadog is a vendor, um, and they provide real-time analytics for your servers. Uh, you can log your own events, uh, though we don't tend to do a lot of that. So for logging our own events, we tend to go the Druid route. But Datadog has a, um, an agent that runs on all of our machine that uh, gets information about the CPU load and all sorts of like very operational metrics. Um, and we do you know, stream the data to, uh, to that company because Datadog is a vendor and then uh, we're able to analyze it and do um, ops type alert on it. So that's another component of real time at Airbnb that is somewhat complementary um, to the rest of the stuff that we have. And then uh, and then we have the Druid use case uh, with Superset. You can imagine Superset right behind Druid here. And uh, I'm going to kind of zoom in into that as to how we load data into Druid. Um, here, I wanted to, um, to give you this pointer to this other talk that uh, colleagues of mine that um, have been se setting up a lot of this infrastructure at Airbnb. So Jingwei and Li and um, I've given a talk at the Spark Summit um, sometime last year. Are, are fairly recently anyways, and uh, the video is on YouTube. So if you want to learn more about um, the data infrastructure, the real-time data infrastructure at Airbnb, I would uh, recommend you go and uh, check out this talk um, if you're interested. Now I want to talk about how um, the little abstraction we have to load data into Druid. So it's, it's really not that easy to load data into Druid, and it's a common pattern at Airbnb. We need to get data in there. We need to people to specify how they want to get that data in there. Um, and you know, if we were to just say, like, oh, write your own Spark streaming job and figure out what the port and the host name is for the Druid server, uh, that wouldn't scale very well. So we have this simple abstraction called AeroLap. And I'm going to try to describe briefly how it works uh, before we get into the superset demo. Um, so two use cases. We load data into Druid from Kafka in real time. And for the hot data in Hive that we want to make really fast and really interactive, um, that is the second use case here. And you can see, um, hopefully you can read from uh, as far as you are, but you can imagine that the way it works is uh, we ask people to, um, to set up a uh, config file. So the, the format here is called Hocon, which is a superset of JSON, but it's a very simple config file that describes um, what are the dimensions and metrics that you want to load into Druid, and what is, um, what is the Kafka topic and the thrift schema you want to reference um, and define you know, what are the data types and how they should be loaded. Uh, you can imagine that you could set up, say, a, um, a sampling parameter, say, oh, I want to sample based on user ID 1% and things like that. Um, so this is how you configure how data is going to flow into Druid. So it's fa fairly easy for um, any engineer, data scientist, data engineer, to go and, and drop a new Hocon file in this folder. And that's all you need to do for this to get picked up 
by um, the Spark streaming job. So the Spark streaming job will reread this, this folder, discover it, and based on what it finds, it will start loading data into Druid. On the right side is a uh, very similar config file to load a, uh, a batch process into Druid. Um, so here, the main parameter is a SQL statement or a HQL statement. So this is assuming that we're going to run a Hive query and that the output of this Hive, uh, this hive query is going to get loaded into Druid. Uh, so this is just a batch ingestion portion. So you can imagine that it would also have the, the first section here on the left. And you define the number of shards. What is your timestamp column? Because uh, Druid has a primary index on, a, on the the time, uh, a date type column, so it assumes it's time series data. Um, and then you define your sources, and as you define this, uh, the Airflow job will discover this config file and somehow uh, create a new mini uh, DAG or new tasks in your workflow and uh, start loading data into Druid automatically. All right, so now we're entering the superset portion of, of this uh, presentation. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, Superset, I want to talk a little bit about the, the original vision and, and how it started and why would a company like Airbnb build a business intelligence uh, web application instead of just buying one. Um, so, so the original vision, uh, part of it was, uh, so we wanted to do real time, we wanted to bring in Druid. There was no tools out there that worked with Druid at the time. I believe now there, is, there are a few options now to query and visualize data out of Druid. But if you wanted to query Druid before, you would have to write your own JSON and your own little application. So um, for Hackathon one day where other people had been working on uh, testing out, test driving Druid and doing a POC on Druid internally, I decided to build a set of tools to be able to visualize the data um, that was in, inside Druid. And then, you know, I'd been playing with all sorts of D3 examples, which are kind of represented here on the right side. And it's always, it's always a pain to... Uh, take your own data, you know, take a D3 example, and then, you know, munge your data into the right JSON format and load it in, and then you got a static HTML file on your, you know, on your desktop, uh, on your local uh, computer uh, with a data visualization. You don't know how to share it. So I was like, oh, there's got to be a way uh, for someone to build a tool where you can easily query any database out there, including Druid, uh, do a microscopic amount of work, and get to any visualization. And that was the scope of the project originally, uh, was what uh, we call the Explore View, which uh, I'll demo in just a little bit. And eventually it grew into, uh, in popularity at Airbnb on top of Druid and on top of, um, I made it work with Presto. And eventually it started, uh, a lot of users started using it instead of Tableau just because it was easier and low friction and very easy to uh, put something together. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that uh, a trend that I see, you know, in BI, working in BI for, for uh, a long time is that the life cycle of a dashboard or, or a data set seems to shrink over time. Uh, so that means that when you build a dashboard today, it might be the new hot thing in your company for, for a few weeks, and people are going to consume and go to this dashboard every day until there's the, the new um, hot thing, which maybe people are talking about uh, a, a new, uh, new analytics problems, and then a new dashboard gets built and people, people's focus um, shift uh, very well, very fast. So it used to be that you'd build like the company dashboard and it would be in production for five years. Now it's more like you run, you, you build your own little dashboard for your team, um, you use it, you make some decision. At some point you might just uh, move forward and start looking at a different dashboard that represents the, the flavor of the week, if you, if you will. So I think it's important for tools to, um, for tools like Superset and Tableau to make it really low friction to build dashboards because dashboards have short life cycles. All right, so this uh, brings us to the live demo portion. So we're gonna we're gonna hope that everything goes well. So this is uh, so this demo for context runs off of my laptop with a MySQL database running on my laptop. Um, so the performance is fine, it's just not running off of Druid. I wish I could just VPN into Airbnb and show you all the cool dashboards that, that we do have at Airbnb and, and show you know, app crashes of the Airbnb app in real time and things like that. But I can't really do that. I would have to have everyone sign an SLA, uh, uh, some sort of NDA and um, I would rather not have to do this. Um, I'm hoping, oops, this is my screen, sorry, I need to move this over here. 
this was my desktop. Um, and I think that means I'm going to have to turn to my left while I do this demo. Maybe I will. Yeah, um, I'd rather not figure that out right now. OK, cool. So, so in this demo today, I'm going to show you the, kind of the core components of Superset. And hopefully, you'll get a sense for how Superset works and what it can do and what it cannot do. Uh, in this case, we're connected to this local database. We're not connected to Druid, but you can assume it's the exact same. You would um, connect to Druid the exact same way as what I'm demoing here today. Um, and uh, one interesting thing is that uh, you, know, you can install Superset today on your laptop, and it's very easy. You can pip install Superset, follow a few um, instructions on our documentation, and uh, quickly you're going to get to this screen with the exact same examples and data sets uh, that, that you can start playing with. And quickly you can also connect to your own databases, uh, whether that database is local on your laptop or um, on one of your servers, provided you have a, con you know, a connection string. And then you can start you know, making reports on your own data. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, just showing a few dashboards, because that is uh, kind of the top-down approach would be to show dashboards. And we're going to look at individual charts um, and then into something called SQL Lab. So this is a dashboard. You can see that we support you know, classic type of uh, data visualization with some that are uh, a little bit less common. Here, this is the context you know, where you would like, move things around and set your things and save your dashboard. And you know, uh, you can, there we have this thing where you can change the CSS. So this is where you would design and consume your, your dashboard. So this is the dashboard view. And I'll show you a few other dashboards. I guess we have only three to look at. Um, so this one here is like uh, health data uh, by country over the past like 50, 60 years. So this is the world population, and uh, I believe this is a percentage of rural population per country. And you can see a little bit more you know, dif different data visualization that we can use box plot and tree maps and bubble charts and spectrum. Um, what's that called? Sun sunburst diagram uh, and just good old tables and things. Um, we, have a we support a little bit of um, basic interactivity on the dashboard, meaning that you, know, you can, you can uh, apply some filters if you want. Uh, and these will be reflected in the different components. Um, I believe this shows um, more or less the dashboard view. And I'm going to do this thing. So one thing that's great about Superset is any dashboard, it's really easy to, and very natural to go from the dashboard view into the, what we call the explore view. And the, this explore view is where really the project started originally. Um, and the first iteration at Hackathon, we had essentially just uh, this uh, one page app here. And the context here is uh, th in this view, you have all sorts of controls on the left that allows you to define a chart that is shown on the right side. And this is also where uh, you would save these, what we call slices, and you can you know, override them, save them as, and add them to existing dashboard or create dashboards from here and create a collection, create a dashboard as a collection of uh, slices as in slice and dice. So what I wanted to show briefly here on the left side is that you have these controls, uh, you know, which data source you're pointing to, uh, which visualization type you want to, like which way you want to visualize things. Um, you know, some time filtering. So the time filtering is either hard dates or you, know, you can do um, relative time. So write things like now or three years ago or 15 days ago. Um, you can also change your time grain. So that means, say, if you were in Druid looking at app crashes uh, on the Airbnb app, you could look at, oh, I want to look over the past 24 hour per minute, per region. And eventually, you could drill down into, like, I want to look into you know, per machine. Is there a specific machine that's gone uh, poorly or something like that? Um, here, this is where you pick your metric. So say, and your, your main group by. So instead of grouping by country name or country code, I might want to um, query by region, and that's all I need to do. So everyone that does not speak SQL knows how to consume a dashboard, go into this explore view, explore a little bit further, assemble their own dashboard easily, and share that with people. Um, so it's very low friction, very easy to use. And then you can see that you know, we have things that are more like, do you want a, you know, some more basic um, 
parameters, like do you want to expose the legend or not? Do you want to use this rich tooltip, uh, kind of a line, a vertical line, or a more simple tooltip? So tons and tons, tons and tons of options, including some things that are a little bit more data munging. So things like doing, um, so if you want to do, so here we're doing a period ratio. So we're looking at the growth rate over the past 10 years. Or you can be looking at a, a moving average and things like that. So we have these functions that we added over time um, in the product. So that, you know, I wanted to spend a little bit of time on the explore view because that's kind of the heart of the application and, and give you a good sense for how it works. Uh, you can imagine that if you do change uh, the type of visualization, so if I go towards a word cloud here and I would like to look, say, a word cloud by country code and hit my query button, um, then the list of controls that you have access to are very different because each data visualization does not have the same input. So instead of taking the Tableau approach, um, you know, we, we take this approach of having very custom controls for each visualization. So I have five minutes left, so I'm going to have to accelerate. Um, I want to show now, so you have you know, options. You can see, um, sorry, easily download the CSV. You can see the query that um, Superset is running behind the scene, all that good stuff. And now we have this uh, SQL editor, which is an important component here, where you know, it's a classic uh, SQL IDE uh, that is multi-tab, and you can browse your, um, your database objects. So say here, I could look at the dashboard tables and see you know, what's a foreign key and what, is, uh, you know, what fields are indexed and that, that kind of stuff, and uh, run my own queries. And one cool thing is that you can go and um, actually visualize your result set um, at the click of a button here. So it kind of ties together. If you do speak SQL, uh, you can connect to all your internal databases um, and visualize them and create, the, uh, create dashboards off of your own uh, queries too. Cool, so that, is, that ends the portion of the demo since I have uh, five minutes left. There's a lot more to it. Uh, I have a slide about security, but you can imagine here that um, when I said enterprise ready at the beginning of the presentation, I meant it in a way that you can define who has access to which feature of the application very well, and also who has access to which database schema and tables um, when they use Superset. Cool. So back to the presentation. All right, so this is the fallback. If the, the demo, the live demo doesn't work, I can fall back on these slides. So now you're going to see me accelerate quite a bit because I have a few minutes left. Um, so the stack is a Python backend. We use Pandas, SQL Alchemy, Flask App Builder. So we use Flask, and then this thing called Flask App Builder is a layer on top that does uh, authentication, um, permission management, and CRUD. And then we use all sorts of like state-of-the-art uh, modern JavaScript, like React and Redux. Um, and pretty proud, I would not have been proud of the, the state of our JavaScript code base uh, maybe like a year ago, and uh, now we're at a very, very good place. Uh, security briefly, so we ship with different roles. If you install Superset in your, um, at your company, you can define your own authentication scheme, your own roles. Uh, there's a lot of controls there for you to use. Um, we have this idea that I did not show in the application of a thin semantic layer, so that means semantic layer is um, a little bit of extra metadata around your physical tables that you want to expose in, in Superset. And it says, this is where you're able to say which fields should be groupable. Um, uh, this is also where you would define your calculated columns and cal um, calculated uh, user-defined metrics and things like that. So there's this layer where you can control all of that. Uh, we do do a lot of um, caching. So if you set up a caching backend, the dashboards are going to load very, very quickly because we, uh, behind each chart, there is a JSON blob, and we, um, we cache that JSON blob so that if people are running the same queries, we load, load them off of Redis memcache or file system, whatever, depending on how you set it up. Um, and the UI is really upfront about serving cache data. It will show you very clearly, and it will allow you to force refresh if you wish so. There's also um, a, a cool... Um, Airflow operator, if you want to warm up your cache. So say you load a table that's used by a certain number of dashboards, you can say, go and warm up the cache for, um, for all of the dashboard that use this table. So that, you know, sometimes your Tableau dashboard, people familiar with Tableau, it might take, you know, a minute to load, and it's going to um, 
it's a really bad experience. So in this case, all of our dashboards, uh, you know, provided the, the cache is warm, will load really fast. So briefly, um, Superset is an open source project, and it's really taken off as we speed. So uh, as we speak, so um, 13,000 stars and lots of forks and lots of watchers and lots of commits and contribution. So we're doing pretty well, and we're hoping to like um, that this is just the beginning too. Uh, we're joining the Apache Software Foundation, so that means it's going to be called Apache Superset, and it's easy for bigger company or companies to get involved. Um, so I really, um, I re it's a, like today's presentation is in part a call to it. please like try Superset, use it, join a community um, if you're interest, interested to do so. Uh, we're announcing a partnership with Horton Works, so they're putting some engineers full time on the project because they're committing to Druid and to Superset. Um, so. You're going you're gonna to hear these names uh, more and more over the next few years. And I believe this is almost done. I know I'm running out of time. Um, so what's next? We're growing community, and that's part of the reason why, the reasons why I'm here today, uh, to grow a community. And we're joining the, the Apache Software Foundation. We've got work to do on polishing the UI. So uh, we're a team of uh, four engineers at Airbnb with a PM and a designer. And uh, we want to make Superset super slick um, so that essentially there's no friction. You can just point it to a table and start getting your data and visualizing it and make uh, charts and, and dashboard instantly. Um, we want to sh ship um, our JavaScript components so that people can use them in their apps. Uh, there's this use case of integrating slice and dice capabilities to other data applications at Airbnb and everywhere in the world. So we want to make it really easy for people to um, create, to embed superset components that will interact with the superset backend. Uh, so you can picture these JavaScript components that are really easy to set up um, and are, that are highly interactive and live in your application. And then DSL for the semantic layer, I won't get into details around that. So check out Airbnb.io superset, this is the, our documentation. Uh, there's an installation guide there. Um, I wonder if anyone did install Superset during this presentation. It's totally possible to install it in, in you know, a few minutes. Um, and then you know, uh, all the actions in GitHub, we um, at Airbnb, or at least like for my projects, um, Airflow and Superset, we do all of work. Uh, we take pride in doing all of our work in the open too, so we don't work behind the curtain and uh, push some code over the fence every once in a while. We do all of our work in the open. So. Uh, so please uh, check it out. And that's it. Uh, do we have time for questions? I think, uh, is Georgia in the room? I think we have time for questions. Awesome. Cool. Good thing I sped up. All right. Yes. Uh, microphone. All right. Yeah. Julien is going to. Thank you, Maxime. Yeah, I got a session. Anybody a question over there? Yeah, so uh, how's the superset compliant to uh, uh, implies UI? So the first thing about implies UI, I believe you do. Uh, so, so originally there was a project called um, Pivot out of imply or out of meta market. And uh, I think it was open, open source originally, but then they lost their rights to it. and. Yahoo forked it, and so I'm not sure what's happening with Pivot. I think Yahoo owns it now, and then Imply is selling a, uh, a UI uh, for Druid, and I believe it's pretty new. So um, as of you know six months ago, there, that there was not, they did not have an offering in that space, and I have not seen um, their tooling. The main thing with Superset is that we can connect to any SQL speaking database as well as Druid. So the scope of what we can do. Is is more, uh, you know, it, it's it's broader in some ways, uh, but yeah. So if people, I encourage people if you if you have Druid or you're thinking about Druid, you should check out uh, Imply's um, solution for visualization. Imply is the company behind Druid. So people that used to be at MetaMarket uh, left to create this company called Imply, and they sell services around it. Um, I'm excited for like competing with these guys, and we're also partners with them. I, I have lunch with them uh, pretty often, so uh, it's cool to see Druid take take off and to have like open source offerings in that space. Hey, so really awesome. I guess my question is, how? 
Uh, you know, there's a lot of startups out there, well-funded startups that are doing similar products. You know, Good Data, Mode, Domo, Burst. Yes. And they're, in taste, in, they're creating entire startups based around what you've presented here, which is essentially an open source product that you've created, you know, as inside of Airbnb. So m maybe you can just walk us through or tell us a little bit of how, how this came to be, because it seems like it would take a lot more people than a... Than a, than a few teams, than yeah. a small team. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to answer this question. So, um, so the main thing is none of these solutions uh, could talk to Druid at the time, and I, I believe that is still the case for Periscope mode, um, Tableau, and, and a lot of them did not play well with Presto as well. So a lot of them are, um, they work well with Amazon Redshift and maybe MySQL and Postgres. Um, one thing, so I, so I do have a slide here that I kind of held for after the, the question slide that I, I knew I might have to use. Uh, so it's all the whole build versus buy for us at Airbnb and also for others. So there's some of the, the elements that are rational for us to build this. So one is, Airbnb is going to be a big company, and we already kind of are, and data is very strategic, and we don't want to depend on vendors. Um, I remember I used to be at Facebook, and we could not rely on any vendors of any, of any form for the scale at which we were operating. And sometimes uh, we've, we've tried to push certain things with Tableau, and they just, it's just not on their priority list, and their, their roadmap and their iteration cycles are very long. And even though we'd like to help them on these things, we cannot. Uh, so sometimes we like to own some of these things. Uh, Tableau did not really pre uh, support any form of Presto and Druid, which are our databases of choice, and that is true of other vendors here. I say Tableau, 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 because that was our main, um, our main focus, uh, or that is our, our main uh, alternative at Airbnb. Um, Tableau extracts don't play well, like uh, beyond like a few hundred million rows, it just breaks down, and the reality is Airbnb, we need to, um, we often have tables that are multi-billion records that we need to interact with, and th there doesn't seem to be any solution on Tableau side for us. Uh, and, you know, Druid can really take that on easily. Um, and we don't like, you know, buy-in and uh, th the fact that uh, we're locked in and vendors kind of play games in some cases. Uh, we're committed to open source. Our whole stack is open source, and we want to, you know, for the visualization layer to be as well. Um, we, we do all sorts of like deep integration and the stuff I was talking about, which is like embedding superset components into other data analytical application at Airbnb is, is really important to us and we can't really do that with vendor tools. So that means we need to build all sorts of stuff anyways. Um, and then personally, like I, I'm an engineer, I like to build stuff and I got hired at Airbnb and I would much rather build stuff than, uh, and be excited about it than um, supporting vendor packages. Uh, that we don't really control and we can't really collaborate with. Um, so those are some of the reasons, hopefully, that addresses your question. Thank you, Max. All right, thank you very much.